Hi everyone. Today's topic is CV writing. And we will learn about chronological CV and functional CV. So what is CV writing? What is the difference between resume and CV? Also, what is the difference between resume and biodata? So let us go into this lesson. So what is the general difference between resume and curriculum vitae, which is also known as CV? Now, is there any difference between them? And what is the difference between resume and biodata? Now, before I explain, I want to tell you that you need to make sure that you have your textbooks next to you because it was impossible for me to read the whole lesson and convert into, into a PPT. So I have scanned these pages and I have made this PPT. So I request you to take your textbook and sit with it while I'm explaining it. What is this CV? Is there any difference? I was just talking about it. Well, in general, both of them, whether it is resume or CV, serve the same purpose or a similar purpose. But there are some changes. What is this subtle changes? A resume is a French word and it means a summary of your qualification, skills and experience. It is a brief and concise statement in which no more than one or both the sides of the A4 sheet is there. So they will use one or the both sides of the A4 sheet to write about their qualification and skills. And resume generally uses bullets and avoids narratives. A resume is usually written for a particular job and highlight the skills that are required for it. A resume is more suited for people with previous work experience to apply for jobs where skills rather than academic qualification are important. The word resume is used mostly in USA and Canada. Now what is a CV? A curriculum vitae is a Latin for course of life. That means this is what my life has been. So this is what the education has been. This is what my qualification is. And this is my life course. That's what you are telling in your curriculum vitae. And it is also a summary, but it is a little bit longer and detailed. And this adds academic qualification and professional experience. A CV includes other information such as hobbies, awards, honors, membership of association, etc. It is at least two or three pages long. A CV displays general talent rather than specific skills. I already told you when you are writing a resume, it is a specific skill that you are talking required for that job. Whereas CV is telling a different thing with two to three pages. It provides information about all the degrees, jobs and professional skills that you have acquired. A CV therefore is more suitable for fresh graduates, those who are applying to academic, scientific and research positions. CV is more common in UK, Europe, New Zealand and more Commonwealth countries. Now we'll come to the last paragraph which says, is there any difference between biodata and resume? To be frank, biodata is an old term used for resume and the emphasis on biodata is personal information such as date of birth, religion, nationality, residence, marital status, etc. Such personal details are never included in a resume or CV. And resume and CV contains mostly professionalism and professional information. Biodata lists educational qualification experience in a chronological order and the biodata is very familiar in 
countries like india pakistan and bangladesh compared to the other countries which i have mentioned like usa or canada or uk europe new zealand etc so now you have a better understanding of what is a cv what is a resume biodata and what are the difference between all these three formats Biodata is often made in a format specified by the employer. It is mostly used in India while applying for government jobs. The term biodata is familiar mostly in South Asian countries such as India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. So our next topic deals with what is a CV for? What are the general guidelines that you need to follow? And your CV must be easy to read, short and attractive. So a CV is simply an advertisement of yourself. So the primary purpose of a CV is to make you appear attractive, interesting and worth considering to the company. After going through your CV, the prospective employer should be impressed and interested enough to call you for an interview. A CV in itself may not get you the job, but an effective CV is the gateway to a successful career. A CV should demonstrate that you have required ability and the attitude to perform the job you have applied for. You should send a CV when it is asked for in a job interview or when you are inquiring whether any jobs are available. So, there you go. The CV is your gateway. You are advertising yourself that I am eligible for the job that you are giving me and I am suitable. So please take me and see this is my CV. This is a proof which shows that I am eligible for the job that you are seek seeking for. General guidelines. Type the CV neatly. Use a simple layout and print on a good quality printer. Use bold or underlines for heading. Either use bold or underline. Don't use both of them together. Leave standard margins for the document. Do not overcrowd the page with text. Spell check your document but do not use Autocorrect blindly. Some people use the apps which are available online. Don't use those autocorrect. Make sure you yourself have checked the spellings and uh, the sentences properly. Use bullets for subsections or lists, but do not use too many bullet styles. Do not use too many fonts, sizes, and colors. Use your CV should look professional, not amateurish. Do not just copy standard CV samples. Your CV should be your own, personal and little bit different. I have seen people who have copied other people's CV and they forgot something like their address is missing or their email address, phone number is different because they have copied someone else's CV and they forgot to write all the information related to them. And they did not delete the information which was related to that other person from whom you copied. Or it was also a sample CV given in the internet. So make sure that you are checking two to three times if you are taking a sample CV and make sure that your own content is there. No other content is there which does not belong to you. Your CV must be easy to read, short and attractive. Keep it simple. What you have written may seem simple and obvious to you, but not to an employer. Go through it again and again and make it shorter, more readable and more understandable. Use simple, straightforward and formal language. Active verbs. And as few qualifiers, you can use adjectives and adverbs as possible. You can say, I am a flexible person. I am a hardworking person. 
and I'm a team worker. I believe in teamwork. So use all these verbs and adjectives to express what kind of a personality you are. And when you have written the CV, get someone else to read, like a friend, senior, a teacher, and tell him to go through it. And you ask him, can I make this CV uh, better? So, as you have understood that we should not take CV preparation as a light thing. You have to be careful with the guidelines and you have to make sure your CV is uh, readable, it is short and attractive. Types of CVs. All CVs contains more or less the same information, but the manner and the sequence in which it is presented differs. Let me tell you, you have different attires for different occasions. In the same way, for a birthday, for an event, for a freshers day or for any festive. So in the same way, CVs also are different and they differ. On the basis of style of presentation or presenting information, CVs can be categorized as chronological CV, functional CV, combination CV, CV with profile, targeted CV, mini CV, non-tradition CV, etc. Each of these types has its own use and purpose. Therefore, choose the type of CV that suits your purpose and context of your application. It is like going for an event or a party. You need to select what dress suits what event or what function or a party. But in this unit, there are two things which we need to concentrate or we are concentrating only in two main types of CV. One is chronological CV and functional CV. So let us discuss in detail. What is a chronological CV? Chronological CV is the most important, common and popular format of writing. In this format, your list of details of your education, expertise, special skills, training, experience, accomplishments and so on in a reverse chronological order. The most recent qualification or experience first. That means if you say you are doing degree, first degree then your intermediate qualification, then your SSC. So it is reverse chronological order. The chronological CV is used to draw the attention of the employer to your academic and professional qualification. It is used to project an overall summary of your career rather than highlighting any specific aspects. A chronological CV works best if you are still a student or a fresh graduate and therefore do not have any special accomplishments or special skills to highlight. It will also work well for those who have a steady career graph and have been in the same field or steady work over a period of time or applying for a position in the same field. So what is it if you are a fresher? It is this chronological CV is useful and someone is in the same field for example someone is a lecturer for the past 14 years or someone is working as a scientist for the past 20 years so this chronological CV will be useful however if there are gaps in your education or career or someone has shifted from lecturer to a trainer someone has shifted from a scientist to a professor that time this chronological CV is not suitable because they will show a time gap what to include in this chronological CV a chronological CV usually compromises six sections what are they personal information education experience skills interests and achievements and lastly references so what is this first point of personal information name date of birth age only is required postal address contact phone number email address these are the only things that are required keep this section as short as possible 
do not give any information that is not essential. For instance, do not give more than one postal or email address or phone number. Some people have two phone numbers. So make sure you give that phone number which is a permanent number which will not remove in one or two years. And make sure your email address is professional, not a funny one. Something like this, like ask who at so and so uh, gmail.com or yahoo.com or worldpeace at so and so dot com. So please make sure that your email address is professional and also no need to specify your gender, marital status or religious affiliation as they are not necessary. So now you have a better idea and let us look into the next five points in our next slide how to write this chronological CV and what to include what not to include. The next, the next point tells us about education. List the most recent qualification first. Provide the years of study and the names of the institutions where you have studied. Include the subject options you had taken in your course. Include grades and division. That means write your latest qualification. If it is PG, write PG first, then degree, then intermediate then your SSE, mention the institution names and also the specialized subjects you have taken BCom or BSc and also include your grades which division have you come first division distinction the next point is experience again like the education list the most recent experience first what is the present company that you are working for and what is the name of your employer job title and more importantly what you actually did and achieved in that job if you have taken any internship and part-time work you can also mention that and if you have more than one kind of work experience give that one is directly relevant to the job that you have applied for and also make sure that your experience is written from the most recent to the to the last of your experience skills proficiency in languages what languages you know some people know four languages and some people know three languages only so write what is your profici proficiency in languages and if you know some computer skills or any other skills like typing or shorthand you can include that also and you are an expert in some other uh, computer skills like tally or you have learned some other software you can also mention that interests and achievements your employer will be particularly interested in activities where you have been responsible and your responsibility you have fulfilled as a leader that means you are a leader and you have led a team members to some successful project or you have uh, done a project successfully where you are a team leader and you had team members mention those things suppose if your interest is related to stamp collection and you have collected so many stamps but it has nothing to do with the job that you are applying for no need to mention mention only those achievements where it will help you to get that job and give only enough details to the to explain don't give extra information only give necessary information and if you have won any awards or honors or you have published any articles and you have jointly or by yourself done something you can mention it also if you have done any voluntary work you can also provide those details too so that's why I tell you working as a team and being a leader it's very important that will add an added advantage that you were a leader and you led some people under you as a team and the employer who is seeking to take you will see this as a advantage to him it is an advantage to you also now the last one is reference so usually give two names from your place of study and one from your workplace if you have work experience what is this reference you need to select two people and give their names 
and their phone numbers or email address so that the person who selects you for this job after clearing all the rounds let me tell you once again not the first round when you have cleared all the rounds and they are thinking to take you and give you that offer letter he will once want to clarify it so he will call these two people whom you have selected and he will ask you how is this so and so called person and uh, how is he is he hard working and what kind of a person he is so he will ask he or she is he will ask all these details so please make sure you are giving one reference from the place of study and one reference from your workplace suppose you are a fresher you can give uh, one from the study place like your principal or your uh, hod and one from the family member who is a family friend not a family member i'm sorry a family friend whom you know and make sure he is an elderly person and he is in a very high position maybe like a manager something like that and make sure the reference the referees are informed and are willing to give you a reference i told you an older family friend who has known you for some time and tell them that i'm giving your name as a reference suppose they call you and they tell who is this person because there are many people uh, whose name uh, matches your name and they may say i don't know that person so please make sure that this referees knows that you have given his or her name as a reference give their contact phone number email addresses as a reference now the next topic is covering letter what is this covering letter when you are sending a cv or a job application include a covering letter in the covering letter provide a short 3 to 5 lines a profile or a personal statement describing your current status and career objective so currently where i am working and what is my career objective what is this i want from this job and do not repeat any information that is included in the cv if you have written something in the cv don't include in your covering letter it should be something new and make sure you take a xerox copy of this that means a photocopy of this application of the covering letter and the cv and uh, uh, what you have posted to that hr because in future when they call you for the interview you can refer back to this photocopy or the xerox and you can know oh, this is what the xerox uh, is telling this is what i have sent as a cv this is what i have sent as a covering letter these are the things that i have sent to them because they may call you for this interview after one week sometimes after three weeks also there were times when people have called for the interview uh, after a month so make sure you take a photocopy of all the things that you have sent the covering letter the cv and anything else you have sent to the hr here is a sample cv and by looking at this cv you can understand how to write your own chronological cv so here we can see it is a sample cv chronological cv of raj peter and he has written his details where he lives and his apartments his mobile number and email address he wrote his education like first he has written pg then he has written his degree uh, and so on it's in a reverse chronological order and he's also written his employment experience that means where he worked okay in prime technologies and what did he do he was a language coordinator and uh, he was responsible for arranging training uh, for fresh recruits and he led a team of six language trainers and successfully rolled out online language software and organized workshops for the development of language modules and here are his skills he has writing and editing skills compiled and edited companies newsletter created and edited content for company website and he has also computer skills he has uh, learned microsoft office he can work on word excel and powerpoint he knows front page page maker and corel draw also and he is fluent in three languages 
which is Hindi, Telugu and English. Currently, he is learning to speak Chinese and Esperanto. Now, these are his interests and achievements. He was an active member of Hyderabad Rocks, which helped raise awareness about the need to protect rocks scapes of Hyderabad. An Employee of the Year Award, he got it in 2015 and 16 for contribution to the corporate life. And he got the Best Student Prize Award for overall performance in academics and extracurricular activities. And here is the referees he is mentioning in his resume. We have Samina who is the head HR trainer in Prime Technologies and her phone number and email address. And we have also a person from his steady thing like he knows Professor MS Rao. He was the head of the department English and he gave his mobile number and also email address. So now you have a better understanding with this sample chronological CV that how to write your own chronological CV. And here are some exercises. In your exam, they may ask what's the difference between CV, resume and bio data. And also they may tell you to write the structure of a chronological CV. And here you can see they can also tell you to prepare a sample CV. Here he's very clearly saying wanted a reputed company estate manager for disposal of land and building situated near New Delhi and persons with experience of working with reputed builders may apply salary with experience and apply in a strict confidence to PO box number so and so and he is giving the address or email address. So here either he may ask to write what is the difference between CV resume or bio data or the structure of chronological CV in your exam that is annual exam or he may also write to ask to write your sample CV prepare a sample like a mock CV uh, and send it to so and so address. So now you understand how in the exam they will ask and our next topic is functional CV. So what is this functional CV? A functional CV is also known as skill based CV and highlights your skills and abilities rather than your academic qualification or employment history. In chronological CV, the concentration is on academics, qualification and what employment history you have, where and where you have worked. But here in functional CV, your whole concentration is on your skills and abilities. And instead of giving information, here in a chronological order, a functional CV organize your skills into various categories. And functional CVs are job specific. As I mentioned earlier, functional CV are job specific and they work well if there are gaps in your career or if you have changed the tracks too often if you had several short stints of employment rather than one continuous career. Some people may have gap in their academics because unfortunately or because of some things they have not cleared their exams or sometimes some people won't get jobs so there is a time gap in their jobs for example there may be a brief time where you are not working and there is a gap so in order to not show that gaps you can use a functional cv it will be better if you use a functional cv a functional cv projects your transferable skills and helps you to draw the attention of the prospective employer to only those aspects of your career that you want to emphasize. So functional CV will tell only those things which is useful for that job. It also gives employer an opportunity to quickly assess whether or not you have that skills that are required for the job. So it will concentrate more on your skills rather than your experience or your education qualification which is the core priority of chronological CV. Now what to include in a functional CV? The elements of functional CV is as same as chronological CV but they are arranged differently. 
First, personal information, name, date of birth, age if required, postal address, contact phone number, email address. After this, you may add a brief personal profile in four to five sentence, focusing on your key skills and outings, your career objectives, that is what position you aspire for. Second, skills and abilities. The focus of a functional CV is on skills and abilities than you possess that you possess rather than when and where you have acquired them. No need to tell them which college or so and so, but the concentration is on skills and your abilities. So instead of listing the jobs you have done or their designation, mention the functions you have performed followed by the evidence of your skills in those roles. So mentioning the skills is very important rather than where you have acquired those skills from. Career history, a brief summary of your career. Instead of your job title, describe your role and responsibility in each job. So what is career history? Tell them what you have done in that particular job and how you have come up in that project. Tell them the process, what you did. That is known as career history. Education and training. Again, instead of merely listing the academic degree you possess, just telling them from degree from so and so college, PG from so and so college, instead of that, mention the skills you have acquired in each of the course. See that you highlight those skills that are relevant to the job you have applied for. For example, if you are a trainer, don't tell them where you have got the training from. Tell them how you trained them and what are the things that you did to train that team members and how you were a trainer and what you did as a trainer. Interest and achievements, additional information. Mention your interests, particularly those that are relevant to the job applied for or those that reflect on your personality. So tell them those achievements and additional information which tells that yes, you have done that job, you have successfully completed that project. So tell them those achievements that will give you that job interview. Reference, you may give two references as in a chronological CV. However, in this format, it is also acceptable to write available on request. So you can put in functional CV, available on request, about whom the references. So if at all they want it, they will ask you. So if they don't want it, they don't ask you. That's the small minute difference in chronological CV and functional CV where you can put this request available on request. Also, as with the chronological CV, add a covering letter and keep a copy of the complete application you have sent for further reference. Now here is a sample of functional CV. So we have Raj Peter here and you can see the actual CV should be more dis descriptive and should be at least two or three pages. So personal profile, I'm a postgraduate in English with considerable industry exposure and experience in training content development, coordination, and leadership. I am capable of achieving personal as well as institutional goals as evidenced by my career graph and success at workplace. I am looking for a challenging position that offers long-term potential in research training and content development. So this is the personal profile. If we go back to the sample example, of chronological CV, there is no mention of this personal profile. But whereas in functional CV, he is telling what he has done as a English trainer or a faculty member in English. He said he conducted training, he had content development, coordination and leadership programs. And these are the goals that he has achieved. So he is telling everything about his skills. He is not telling, I have done this so and so from this college. I have four years of experience in this company. That is not mentioned here as 
in the example given for chronological CV. Functional CV is different. We are focusing on the skill. Next, skills and abilities. Training. I have conducted language training courses for six batches of newly recruited personnel in the last two years. Each batch comprised 35 members and the duration of each course was six weeks. The training led to noticeable increase in retention rates of employees. Marketing. I have successfully marketed language training modules for in-service personnel. The career growth of trainees proves the effectiveness of the module. Leadership. I have led a team of six language trainers and our team won the best performance award this year. Do you see the difference in chronological CV? We just told skills and he said writing and editing skills. I compiled and edited company newsletters. I created and edited content for company website. That's what he told in chronological CV. But whereas in functional CV, He's telling in-depth abilities of his skills. He conducted training, he did the marketing, and he also did the leadership things. And what all he did, he gave the number of people also who attended it. So it's a complete in-depth explanation of his skills and ability. I think you have a better understanding the difference between chronological CV and functional CV and how you need to explain in detail about your skills. Career history. Language Coordinator, Prime Technologies, Hyderabad, 2016 to present date. In this position, he is responsible for recruiting training personnel, training the trainers, coordination with the HR department. That means after training these people or training those clients, he needs to talk with the HR department so that these people who are trained will be sent for the interview and they will get the jobs. Because at the end of the day, the whole training is for the jobs. As a trainer, I have trained people for soft skills. I have trained for call center etiquette. I have trained for spoken English and I also trained people for how to attend an interview and at the end of the day I will send all these people to the interview so that they get selected that's why they have joined my company or they have joined under my guidance to be trained by them to get that job so he's telling very clearly so many people he's uh, he's had his recruiting training personnel and he trained the trainers and he coordinated with the HRs many time I told you I'm a team leader I train my team and those team members become team leaders and they train their team members so it's a hierarchy marketing head in-house limited second bad 2014 to 15 he said I was responsible for demonstrating the language software developed by the company in the professional college in South India and procuring orders from them so he's telling I have developed a software language and that software language has helped the company in a very great way. Research Fellow Language Institute, Pune, 2013 to 14. He's telling, my role in this job was to conduct surveys in schools and colleges, collect and collate data. So here you understand, in the chronological CV, they will just say their experience. Prime Technologies, Language Coordinator from this year to this year. That's it. But here in functional CV, he told in prime technology, what did he do? In marketing, as the head of the marketing in-house limited, what did he do? And as a research fellow in the language institute in Pune, what did he do? Now you understand functional CV tells us in depth about the skills, what he has done. Education and training. In 2016, I successfully completed a diploma course in teaching language from Open University while continuing in a full-time job. MA English, Usmania University 2012. Course work included writing a project and practice teaching. Besides learning the theoretical aspects of the language, I learned research methodology through project work and classroom skills through peer teaching. 
interest and achievements and additional information. Here, he is telling Raj Peter, as a person, I am an active member of voluntary organization Hyderabad Rocks, which works for the preservation of rockscapes of Hyderabad. I won the employee of, of the year award 2016 for contribution to corporate life. I was awarded the best student prize during my post-graduation course at Usmania University and I am proficient in Hindi, English and Telugu and I am currently learning Chinese and Esperanto. Do you see, if you go through the previous explanation, when I was explaining chronological CV, this much in-depth was not told while he was telling about interest and additional information. But in functional CV, he told more about it. Next, the referees, as I told you, there is an option available on request or you can directly give. Again, he has given the same uh, example as uh, Samina Mirza and that is she is the HR training prime technologies and here is Professor MS Rao, head department of English, Usmania University and his mobile number and email. So note how the gaps in career from 2012 to 13 and 2015 to 16 are de-emphasized. They are not mentioned in this format. Either explain the reason for the gap in the CV itself or be prepared to give a reason in the interview. So it's better to be prepared and give the reason why there is gap in the interview rather than writing in the CV. And if you are confident enough, you can write in the CV. But my suggestion is, don't mention it or write it in the CV when they ask you in the interview why there is a time gap of 2012 to 13 and 2015 to 16. Be prepared and tell what is the reason. And the reason should be appropriate. Some people are there who don't want to do the job and after learning and experience after one or two years when they have this troubled life, then they go and do the job. That is not the correct example here. Maybe you have not done the job because you are going for a training like tally or you are doing some other course or some medical problem was there or there were some issues in the family because of some financial problem. So any problem which is genuine they will accept otherwise they will never accept you and give the job if you have a problem of laziness or procrastinating things. Now this is only one way of writing about yourself. You can make it impersonal by avoiding the personal pronoun instead of writing I am a postgraduate in English or I have conducted language training. You may write a postgraduate in English and conducted language training courses. These are some example he's telling. You can write instead of I am, you can say a postgraduate in English or conducted language training courses instead of writing I have conducted language training courses. Now, I have a homework for you. That is, prepare a CV of your own from the above suggestions and tips. Prepare your own CV. You know, many times students come to me and ask me, Sir, is this CV correct or not? Let me tell you, there will be n number of mistakes in their CV. I am not telling this to degrade the student, but I am telling you so that your CV is the best and that is the gateway to your job. When they see your CV, they call you for the job. So don't take it lightly. It's like a trailer. Understand, it's your pass to enter the interview room and face the interview. So please take some sample examples from the internet, browse it or know how the CV is written. Uh, and why can't you take the same examples which was given, it, which is given in your textbook? Change Raj Peter and all the other things and write your own address and write a CV. And let me tell you, sir, why should I do my job? Will I will get this job in third year. I will write it in third year. No, you want to miss your 15 marks. Are you careless about your marks? Then don't do it. If you are serious about it, do it. It's a nice thing. Writing your own CV from that example given in your textbook is a wonderful way of practice. Because in the question, they will ask you either what is the format of a CV or write a sample CV. It can be chronological CV or functional CV. And let me tell you, this will help you 
to write the best CV in the third year when you go for the interview. Please, it's a request. It's a personal request from me that you try a sample CV with your own address, with your own education qualification with your own interest and abilities write the achievements that you have achieved in the college in intermediate in schooling level so mention all these things and write it i challenge you take this challenge now i want to tell you this cv or resume whatever you are preparing don't copy from others don't copy paste it I've seen many people uh, who does videos to become famous, they have copied some other person's creativity and did that. So don't copy anyone. You be unique. You are a unique person with your own creativity. So keep that CV, resume simple and make sure your CV is the best. Why? You see the first picture, they will scan through the CV, they will tell, wow, his CV is so nice, so presentable, no mistakes. Grammatically, they are correct. Font is very nice and the preparation is very nice. And, you know, uh, his achievements, he has done so and so. I, I am liking this person and he will see your CV. Then he will shortlist you. That's the second picture. And in the third picture, and you are called for the interview. And if you clear that interview, then you get that job. So, girl, so... Students, don't take this as a light thing. This is the longest chapter in our whole textbook. And let me tell you, that's the reason I had to scan it and upload it in the PPT. And once again, I request you at the end of the session, keep your textbook with you to understand this class. And thank you, everyone. Have a nice day.